The Catholic Pagan Trinity versus the Biblical Godhead. Let's compare the two. I'm going to show you what the Catholic Catechism says about their man-made pagan trinity and compare it to what the Bible says about the Godhead, about the three being one. Let me read you from the Catholic Catechism. This is uh, Catholic Church Catechism number 249. It says, From the beginning, the revealed truth of the Holy Trinity has been at the very root of the Church's living faith, principally by means of baptism. So, the Catholic Church says that the Trinity is the core doctrine, the, the very root of the Church's living faith. To the, it's, it's their core doctrine. It's, what, it's their core belief. Okay? Let's see what else the Catholic Catechism says about the Trinity. This is in the Catholic Church Catechism number 251. It says, pull it up. And, and this is very interesting. They actually admit that they have to add unbiblical terms to explain the Trinity. Watch this. In order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the Catholic Church had to develop her own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin, substance, person, hypnotesis, whatever, uh, relation, and so on. Huh. So the Catholic Church openly admits they have to add to Scripture, add extra biblical terms. Many of which, the, many of these terms they use, by the way, are the same stuff that the Trinitarians use. Interesting. But they admit they have to add philosophical, you know, this uh, scholarly, you know, type stuff. Philosophical terms, these un-extra biblical terms to explain the Trinity. Hmm. Interesting. And isn't all, I mentioned this earlier, isn't it also a coincidence that a lot of these terms they have to add are the same terms that the non-Catholic Trinitarians use? Interesting. Hmm. Let's see what the Catholic Church says in the Catechism in number... 253 to 254. This is very interesting. They try to explain the uh, Trinity. Well, their Trinity, obviously. Uh, let me just pull this thing up. Actually, it says uh, three persons, the consubstantial trinity. The three divine persons do not share the one divinity among themselves, but each of them is God, whole and entire. The Father is that which the Son is, or the, yeah, the Father is that which the Son is, the Son is that which the Father is, the Father and the Son, uh, Father and the Son that which the Holy Spirit is, i.e. the nature of God. And then they quote some uh, Catholic Council. The three the persons are really distinct from each other. Watch this. They use the exact wording that the uh, Trinitarians use. Three persons are really distinct from each other. God is one but not solitary. Father, Son, Holy Spirit they are not simply just names delegating modalities of the living being, but for, for yeah, it's hard to read this stupid thing, uh, for they're really distinct from one another. Now watch this. He, they explain it the exact same way the Trinitarians do. He is not the Father who is the Son, nor is the Son he, uh, he who is the Father, nor is the Holy Spirit he who is the Father and the, or the Son. You'll see Trinitarians say, Jesus is not the Father, Jesus is not the Holy Ghost, the Father is not the Son, the Father is not the Holy Ghost. Exact same way the Catholics do it. They are distinct from one another in their relation of origin. Now that is true to an extent. There is distinction in the Godhead, but not in the way they are doing it. Uh, it is the Father who generates, the Son who is begotten, and the Holy Spirit who proceeds. The divine unity is triune. Exactly how the Trinitarians explain it. Jesus is not the Father, Jesus is not the Holy Ghost. Uh, where is that in the Bible? Where does the Bible say that Jesus is not the Father, not the Holy Ghost? You see, just like the Catholics, they have to add to Scripture to explain this pagan three-God system of the Trinity. Uh, now, let me show you what the Bible says about the Trinity. This is what God's Word says about the Trinity. Uh, here are some verses on, well, not, not, not Trinity, sorry, I mean, God, uh, verses on the Godhead, sorry, my, my word, you know, I imagine, you know, my haters are probably going to take that and make a video about it, I don't really care, I mean, these people who just obsessively stalk my channel, and, 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 and it's, it's funny, ever since I began supporting Brian Dillinger, I've had these people, just, these people who just attack me now, it's like, it's weird, I mean, but I imagine they're probably going to make a clip of that and, and, you know, attack me over that, but here's what the Bible says about the Godhead, okay? Because the word Trinity is found nowhere in the Bible. John chapter 10, verse number 30. This is Jesus speaking. I and my Father are one. Not two persons, one. John chapter 7, verse or 17, verse 21 and 22. Uh, there are, sorry, let me just pull it up, zoom in. I'm reading off a computer screen, so it's a bit more difficult. Uh, they are, sorry, that, that they all may be done, or, sorry, yeah. I apologize, I'm not good at reading on a computer, as usual. 
uh, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that so they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So the Father is one in Jesus Christ. They are all one. Uh, verse 22, And the glory which thou hast, or which thou givest me, I have given then, that they may be one, even as we are one. So Jesus and the Father are one, just like in John 10, 30. Here's some verses on proving that the Father is in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God, and the Father is in the Son of God. Let me show you that. John 10, 38. Actually, did I just quote that earlier? Oh, no, no. Yeah, John 10, 38. See, I'm still fallible. I'm not perfect. Uh, but as I do, though you believe me, or you believe not me, believe the works that you may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. John uh, John 14, verse 10 to 11. Believest that are thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not in myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me doeth the works. Verse 11. Believe not that I am the, in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for my very works sake. And there's John 14, 20. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. The Father is in Jesus Christ. Jesus and the Father are one. It's that simple. They're not three persons or divine essence or, or these philosophical terms that the Catholic Church admits. They have to add these, these terms to Scripture to explain the Trinity. Now, of course, the first, the main proof text he's, the Trinitarians go to is 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And they'll say, see, look, three persons, one God. Um, it doesn't say that in the verse. It doesn't say these three persons are one. It just says these three are one. If you go uh, look for the references of God in the, in the New Testament, he's always referred to as person singular. He's not referred to as three persons, you know, um, one person, you know. One person, not three persons. Now, again, there is still separation in the Godhead. No doubt about that. Um, the best example of this is in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, where Jesus is baptized and the Father is in heaven and the, and the uh, Holy Ghost comes down descending like it. It wasn't a dove, but he came down like a dove. He descended like a dove on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So the Son of God is on earth. The Father is in heaven. And he basically praising the Son, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And then the Holy Ghost comes down. So there is still separation and the parts of the Godhead can interact with each other. Or there's that there um there's a revelation where the basically the, the Son of God takes the books out of the Father's hand. You know? There's there is distinction in the Godhead. There's other verses like in the book of Acts, Acts chapter two, where Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And I mean there's, there's verses that prove there is separation in the Godhead. But this thing of there are three persons, but they're only one person, or it, it's ridiculous. It's not biblical. God has never called three persons. He's called one person. He's always referred to as person singular. And when Jesus was on earth, the Father was in him. Again, John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. They are one God. You know, I mean, Deuteronomy chapter, where is it? I'm going to pull up the verse. Deuteronomy chapter, uh, where is that verse? Ch chapter 4, verse 6, you know, it talks about how the Lord your God is one Lord. You know, one God. Not, no, not, not, not the Lord your God is three, the Lord your God is one. Very, very simple. So that's the, that's the, the uh, biblical trinity, you know, or the Godhead, you know, obviously uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to stop using the word trinity. It's, it's still kind of stuck in my vocabulary because um, I've been using that word for many, many years. And, you know, again, I'm still fallible. You know, I, I forget, I slip up. Uh, I mean, unlike the, unlike my haters who just never seem to admit they're being to be wrong, I never seen them, you know. And if you slip up or just say anything wrong, they'll just, you know, they'll just hang on that. But again, I'm still fallible. I still slip up. I use the word Trinity, but the biblical term is Godhead, not Trinity. Uh, it's very very clear. So this is what the Bible says about the Godhead, and I just showed you what the Catholic Catechism says about their pagan Trinity. Now, if you're a Catholic out there, what are you going to believe, the Catechism or the Bible? Pick one. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.